Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Woodson is gone as a coach for the Florida State Seminoles. We have to talk that, and we're going to do a season recap today for you on today's edition of Locked on Seminoles. Drake, you know what to do. Let's ride. You are Locked on Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, or as like Drake likes to say, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. Thank you for joining us today. We have a good show for you, I promise. And Drake, let's start with how you're doing today. Dave, I'm doing well. You know, I've rested from the long weekend, much deserved, starting to kick off 2023 up on the right foot. And it seems like Florida State's doing Maybe somewhat similar, depending on how you ask people feeling, how they feel about uh, Mr. Marcus Woodson leaving for Arkansas. Yeah, that is exactly right. And that's exactly where we're going to start today, because that's the news. Marcus Woodson is leaving Florida State for a similar position at Arkansas. If you didn't know any better, you would hear this news and probably be, be you would probably be pissed off. You'd What do you mean he's leaving Florida State for a similar role at Arkansas? It's not that simple. I don't I don't know if it was as simple as Marcus Woodson was just voluntarily leaving and that was the end of it. Um, it felt like that was going to be one of the replacements made on this staff uh, inevitably, whether it was this offseason or next offseason. It felt like it was coming and it felt like something that needed to happen. Drake, do you want to give me your thoughts on why this is not bad news, please? Well, I mean, first, I'm going to say that thank you to um, uh, Brandon Marcella from 247 Sports. He was the first one to break that into, think, I think, around 4 o'clock yesterday. And then Knowles 247 kind of reiterated that, confirmed that. And I, it's it's weird, right? Because Marcus Woodson was someone that we thought highly of. From He was used, used to be the defensive backs coach and recruiting coordinator at Auburn before he arrived here. He already had the previous relationship with Mike Novell. And people forget that Mike Novell's first hire was TJ Rushing, defensive backs coach at Memphis. Then he left for Texas A&M, and Marcus Woodson filled that role when he left. And it's been very up and down, I think, for Woodson since he's been here. The recruiting has been hit or miss. I mean, you did, he did land, you know, you Sam McCall, Azari Thomas. He helped, was able to help keep Amarion Cooper, Kevin Knowles. You see C.J. Hurd for a 2024 class. That's a massive get as well as Edwin, Edwin Joseph and Kyle Red Hussey. But then you also have, I know, the Travis Hunter cloud that still kind of hangs over it. And then you look at the development side of the ball where – Amar and Cooper, Kevin Knowles, they played pretty well last year. And then this year you see not only the two of them, but a majority of the DB room not named Jamie Robinson or Ronaldo Green kind of struggle with fundamentally sound, fundamentally sound football plays as a defensive back. So to me, it's something that probably had to be done. You do need to bring someone in there. That's probably more, I guess it gives you more of a boon on both sides of the ball, whether it be recruiting and development-wise for the field, because especially now we're a team that, feels like we not only compete for the ACC, but also potentially CFP spots. Well, this is something that's not surprising, and there's definitely going to be better name. There's going to be bigger names out there that we'll discuss in a little bit. Right. I, I don't have anything bad to say about, I'm not going to get to sit here and trash Marcus Woodson. Uh, obviously did his best for this program, but I think it was time for both sides to move on. Um, our coverage rating this year was outside the top 50 in the country, which for a defense that was just outside the top 25 overall was obviously dragging us down. Um, like you said, the DB play this year was nothing short of inconsistent at times. Not great. Um, which is funny because <laughs> we ranked, I think first in the ACC in passing yards allowed per game. I think that has to be a little bit misleading of a stat because the coverage, you could just see it with your eyes. It wasn't great this year. DB is the most talented position in terms of, how we've done recruiting it um, on our roster. So Florida State's most talented position is the defensive backfield. So there really is no excuse for the fact that Marcus Woodson inherited talent on a roster that was fairly devoid of talent anyways, but he, he inherited the most talented position and did nothing with it. So yeah, like you said, the players weren't developing, they weren't performing on Saturdays, um, and the recruiting just left a lot to be desired. There's a couple spots on our roster where it makes sense to stuff a couple of elite recruiters. DB uh, coach makes one, makes 
DB coach is one of those that makes sense. I think tight end coach probably is the other one that makes the most sense. Took the word uh, right out of my mouth right there with tight ends coach. Yeah. Right. So I guess moving on from that, who are there any candidates in your mind that seem to make sense? If, if you watch Twitter yesterday uh, or even today, you would think that it's a shoe in for Antonio Cromarty for a lot of people to come coach at Florida State from Texas saying, and what are your thoughts? I mean, I don't think he's going to coach here anytime soon. I just think that that's something that I like Crow. I think actually Crow did a really good job as a graduate assistant while at Texas A&M, but I think right now where you're at, it's you would love to bring someone back home like that, but I don't know if that's going to be the right fit for right now. But, I mean, listen, he did a good job over there. Me, personally, I think you hear the bigger names kind of, you know, that are available. Uh, Jim Leonard, the former Wisconsin defense coordinator. Now, that's someone that's going to have to take a pay cut if he wants to take that job. So that's basically But he was apparently at the Cheez-A Bowl on Thursday, so maybe he was looking at both teams like, hey, do I go over here or do we here for my next stop? After Wisconsin basically said, hey, thanks, but no thanks, even though you're one of our favorite sons, we'll go with Luke Fickle from, from the Big 12, from uh, Cincinnati. Or you have potentially Jimmy Lake, uh, the former Washington, D.C. He was probably one of the people that cat was capitalizing on very solid defensive back recruiting and also was producing first-round talents each and every single year over Washington. That's another one. And I know one that's kind of getting a little bit more of smoke is actually Miami's defensive backs coach, and that's Demarcus Van Dyke, a.k.a. DVD. That would be a good pickup, too. But quite frankly, to me, I think you stick more towards, I guess, bigger established names. And then maybe you get a, the defensive back coach White from Syracuse because Syracuse's mm-hmm. defense over the past few years has done extremely well. And, you know, Jahad Carter is a safety who is leaving from Syracuse, so maybe you get a two-for-one special actually from Dean over there. That, that's kind of the names that I kind of see overall being looked at but i don't right for right now i think we'll, we won't hear a name until maybe for you know until the middle of the month or maybe internally yeah and it's it's a weird situation to be in because we just mentioned how it needs to be a solid recruiting situation but the most important thing i think for next year is like we talked about yesterday you have to be all in next year is your money year so if if you're going to bring in a defensive backs coach right now which you now have to because it's a vacancy I think you got to get a guy who's going to develop the talent that's going to be here for next year to get the absolute most out of them. Um, Not that you're going to forsake recruiting for that because going forward, you're going to need to recruit well and you're going to need to recruit better if you want to get back into consistent national championship contention. But for next year's purposes, I think you have to place a lot of emphasis on a guy that's going to be able to take the talent that's already here because recruiting will not matter for next year with a DB coach that comes in. And somebody who's going to be able to maximize the already fairly decent bit of talent already on this roster. So uh, it'll be interesting, to, I think, to see what that hot coach or that hot board ends up looking like. Um, and I mean, I would expect this to be to not drag on too, too long. Right. This 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 isn't going to be a, th- a six month search. No, no, and also his name was Chip is Chip West. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I look it up real quick for the Syracuse quarterbacks coach. Also, be on the lookout for maybe going to Tony Tokar's route, where it's like not internal, but basically someone that's actually been before. Remember, Mike Trier was a graduate assistant here for I think what was like a month, and then he became the defensive backs coach over Marshall, and then now he actually is the assistant DBs coach actually with the Giants, and then Trey Bell who left last year. I think that's someone that's also look out for. But it, I mean, you're right. I think it's something that. This will be taken care of, I think, by the end of the month. And because you first off, you need them to, you know, acclimate with the kids actually are on the current roster. But then you also need them to actually go out there and start recruiting. And also we have two DBs in-house again, again, too, with Kiwan Radliff, the former University of Florida defensive back. He's actually going to be what say he's the director of high school recruiting. And then you have Corey, Ful- uh, Corey Fuller, the former FSU defensive back, who actually is also with high school relations. So maybe, listen, we might have an answer probably at the end of the week. So who knows? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think this will be done quickly. I think it'll be decisive. And I think people should prepare themselves for that realistic possibility that Mike Norvell hires from within as much as we just talked about the fact that it needs to be an elite recruiter and it needs to be a coach who maximizes the performance and probably somebody who's a little more established. Mike Norvell does like to promote from within. And, and so far when he's done it, it's worked out. So I think we'll find out a lot more about this shortly. But Drake. Speaking of taking care of business, I think we have some business to take care of in a way that's going to help our fans. Well, Dave, you're talking about our town sponsor for today's show, and that is our friends over at LinkedIn Town Solutions. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. 
That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire unqualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with the people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. Dave, please tell the folks a little bit more about your experiences with LinkedIn Talent Solutions. As I tell you folks, every single time we do this ad read, LinkedIn Jobs has helped me uh, professionally. I've used it to find jobs, but more importantly, I have. I work at a law firm now. I'm a senior attorney in Tallahassee, and I use it to find candidates. Uh, yeah, Drake, senior attorney. Uh, oh, it is really, t- it is really, really, really tough to find paralegals and it, especially good ones. But everyone's on LinkedIn and matches you, like Drake said, with quality candidates that are going to be the right fit for your business and. Most importantly, it is free. There is no reason not to try something that's free, especially something that has all of the candidates these days on that network. Give it a try. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. And he's right, folks. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster than ever before. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free, for free, and most importantly, hold it free. And as always, terms and conditions do apply. Welcome back. We are rocking. We are rolling. We are done talking about coaches that have left, coaches that might come in. Let's talk about what actually we know for sure did happen this year, which is Florida State won 10 football games. Drake, that is just on its face, not all that easy to believe Um, before this season. I think if we go back and take stock, you had a little saying about the season. Could win eight, should win seven, will win six. Is that what you said? That is what I said before the season, yes. I said that repeatedly. It was basically, it was one of those things where that this team hadn't basically, hadn't earned the benefit of the doubt yet, right? We, I mean, we've only, we'd only won eight, I was eight games in two seasons, three, three games the first year, which was the COVID year, and then five games the previous year after that. All seeing them kind of struggle against the marquee teams, and then also just for some reason like not showing up each and every single every single game. And also, I was still pretty scarred from Jacksonville State game because, quite frankly, that lost me a win total. And trust me, that was the reason why my five and a half did not hit. And that's the last thing you want me to do. That's why Adam Fuller is forever an enemy, my personal own nemesis. But I said that also because I knew the team had a talent that was there, and this team was fully capable of winning eight games. Eight games to me was something that okay. I know y'all can do this. I know the coaching staff can. The talent is there. I just need to see full on the football field. And finally, not only did they meet that, they exceed those expectations. Yeah, and I don't want to use this time to go back and relive the fact that the, that Clemson game, that Wake Forest game, that NC State game, those are all individually, especially NC State, going to feel like huge what-ifs. I don't want to do that um, because we do have something to celebrate that did happen, which is 10 wins. Um, and... It is impossible to be upset about this year as a Florida State fan. Just to be clear, you you have to be happy with what you saw in that field. What you saw was development at all positions. What you saw was even things like that, that none of you probably you thought thought you would see, like Ron Dugan's suddenly having his position humming. Um, whether it's the chicken or the egg, meaning like the receivers that are on the roster being really good, and he's benefiting from that, or vice versa. I think we all have our, our opinion on which of the two it is. I think it's both. Never it's both. Both. maybe, maybe, but you know, you, you just, you saw receiver become one of the strongest positions on the team. That, that was just stunning to see running backs played well. That's typical in a Mike Norvell offense. We got the most out of Trey Benson, Jordan Travis developed further. Um, I think you would say the offensive line, I think didn't get any worse. Arguably it got a decent bit better. Um, it was like, it was like they ranked them as the number one line in the ACC. No, sorry, sorry. They ranked them as one of the top lines in the country. Actually, not only that, I was like, that's yeah, right. So, it, you know, we uh, we had some concerns before the season about what it would look like for uh, Coach Atkins to be coaching as an offensive coordinator and whether that would take away from what he was doing with the offensive line. That does not appear to be the case. So, the offense as a whole, I guess, starting there. Um, what surprised you most this year or, or what made you most uh, optimistic about what Florida State's capable of based on what you saw from the offense this year? I mean, Jordan Travis, right? 
I mean, to be fair, both of us here weren't his biggest fans or biggest supporters actually probably heading into the year. Yeah. And that's someone that's basically like, I personally thought that, you know, we could have actually done better in the portal and everything else. And then he, you said develop further. If there's a word that's bigger than that or, or kind of more representative of how big of a leap he kind of took as like actually a pure pocket passer and becoming the passer first using his seconds to help him, is using his legs to help him out like as a supplement. I would use that term because he definitely shook his. He's not only the number one quarterback probably in our conference. If you want to argue with Drake May, but I think with his legs, Jordan's a little bit, a little bit better. But you can argue that he's a top five quarterback in this country right now, and that's something that, quite frankly, no one saw it coming except for maybe a few people. Shout out Max. I know he's definitely you know he's living it right now. He's smiling from year to year that he was right, and you know what? He was damn right, and he's also was damn right. We backed up with the numbers, but to me. It's definitely the evolution of Jordan Travis into basically a top tier quality quarterback. And now you have to ask yourself, where does he kind of rank overall actually of FSU quarterbacks pass, especially given the circumstances that we've seen this program grow through for the past few years? Yeah, I think it's it's hard not to start there, but I don't want to end there because Jordan Travis has one more season left at Florida State. That's, he does. that's where we are. And I don't want to live in a universe where the biggest or only thing we could celebrate is Jordan Travis's development and undeniably awesome football play because we're going to have to play without him after next year. Um, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of places to go from here, but I think for me, it's the fact that Mike Norvell, uh, like the, the way that this offense developed under Mike Norvell shows me, I think that we can repeat this formula moving forward, even if it's not necessarily with Jordan Travis. And what I mean by that is at Memphis, Mike Norvell seemed to utilize the talent on the roster as best he could. He seemed to squeeze the most production out of the talent, the lesser talent that he had at Memphis, uh, to the point where he put a decent bit of guys in the NFL from Memphis. Uh, when his running game was the strong suit, uh, he created game plans that maximized his running game. Uh, when he thought incredibly that Brady White uh, was going to be the answer, uh, he got three, 400 yard passing games out of Brady White. And if you could do that, you should be able to do it at Florida State. Took a little bit of time, but that's exactly what happened here. You had a repeatable and consistent offensive formula and developing consistency in explosiveness, which is what this team excelled at and allowed us to get down the field and score so many points. Um, that's a formula for success. If you can, if you could be consistently explosive, you're going to be consistently good. So I, I think that's my biggest thing from this year that I'm most excited about going forward for this offense, especially compared to where we were before the year. We didn't know how the receivers were going to look. Receivers looked good. If you're a receiver, you should want to come play for Mike Norvell now. I guess that's my point here. He showcased a maximization of talent and productivity. That should attract recruits in the future. That's the one thing I think fans are still waiting to see in terms of what Mike Norvell is going to be able to do here. Is the recruiting going to get better? Obviously, the transfer portal, we have the number one class, but high school recruiting and whatnot, we'll see how that looks moving forward. But that's what I'm most excited about on this offense this year. Drake, obviously, Jordan Travis is a good choice, too. Now, let's talk defense in a second. But first, I think we have to hear from one of our sponsors. All right, thank you for sticking with us through here to the final segment. Drake, we only have one more segment to talk with everybody, and that makes me kind of sad, but it's a happy segment to talk, I believe, because we're talking more what made us most excited about this team this year. This time we're talking defensive side of the ball. Um, the defense this year at best, uh, or at times, was frustratingly inconsistent. Um you had individual playmakers at every level of this defense. Um, some of them, you had more than one. Uh, so there were definitely some room and areas for improvement of this defense. That's not what we're going to do right now. That's time. That that's a, a that's a segment for another show, and we will get there. But for right now, what excited you most, or gave you the most optimism from what you saw of this defense uh, compared to what you thought before the season and? How that projects moving forward. So I think defensive line, we expected them to do very well. Jared Verse, we expected to do well, and he did. We expected the defensive interior to hold up a little better than it did. And the Fabian level, we knew it was going to be that dude, and we found out how much of that dude he is. So to me, I'm going to go look over at the linebacking core. 
I don't rem- I can't remember a time where I was able to look at the linebackers and be fully confident that, hey, you know what? We're not going to give up slants up the middle. We're not going to give easy passes, you know, to the slot wide receiver down there or also even, you know, the bouldering, bumbling, and stumbling tight end that other teams can use against us because our tight- our linebackers weren't able to cover them. Now with Kalen Deloach taking another step, mm-hmm. and you see Tatum Bethune coming in showcasing how important he was to the UCF defense, and then also looking at DJ Lundy, how he's developed since he's been here. DJ Lundy was someone that I like people want to see the fullbacks, which, by the way, on those fullback design runs he had, looks great. It looked awesome. But to me, linebacking core, that's something that overall made me excited. We Randy Shan, there was a little bit of question mark to see how his development would be going. The looks for, for linebackers, it does look extremely well. We're bringing in Blake Nicholson recruiting-wise, too, as well. Now, granted, I would like to see a little more kids coming in, but... Overall, I'm excited with the way the room is looking. And also, look out for Brendan Gant, someone that made a position switch to see actually how he plays in that role because he was good in special teams. He also was good as a mop-up duty this past year at linebacker. Yeah, that's that's a really hard answer not to choose because... It's so two, hard. It, it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's like it's so, I don't, answers. The last three years, we've done this little thing every offseason where we talk about the most disappointing position from the year. And every year, just spoiler alert, it was linebacker and it was wide receiver. The wide receivers, like we just talked about, took a massive step forward. Well, so did the linebackers. You added Tatum Bethune to that mix. And I do think Tatum Bethune's presence on this team helped Kalen Deloach's development. Uh, but yeah, not taking credit away from what he did at all. That Kalen Deloach is now a torpedo. Uh, I didn't see that coming uh, as, this quickly. Just like uh, just like offensive players don't see Kalen Deloach coming a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. That pop off the video. But I'm going to go a little bit of a different spot. I think what excited me most about this year was despite the fact that the coverage was inconsistent at times, which uh, means that the defensive line needs to get to the quarterback quicker. um, So they weren't always helped out in terms of how much time they had to complete their mission. Um, You're talking about a Florida State defense that had 40 sacks this year. Um, After losing Jermaine Johnson, yes, we brought in Jared Burris, who was very highly touted nationally and recruited by everybody as a transfer of Albany. Um, So we had high expectations for him. But before the year, we even talked about the fact that we weren't sure he was going to start game one just because, you know, you're acclimating to the FBS setting and to the system and to the game plan, to the roster. uh, And that takes time. Obviously, he hit the ground running. And that says a lot about Jared Burst, but it also says a lot about, I think, this defensive coaching staff that they were able to get him integrated so quickly and get him and the entire rest of the defensive line performing at a level where we're bettering our sack total from the year before, which we had with Jermaine Johnson. And so it just makes me think, and this is what I was saying in the very first, uh, at, at the very start, which is if this is a repeatable formula for this coaching staff, meaning it's not necessarily based on having one particular player or one player of any type, that means this is repeatable and that's the most that's the most encouraging thing to me about the defense which was you may have seen some inconsistency but overall i think you found a formula that's repeatable you infuse some more talent into this defense you for example get some better play out of the dbs that helps the defensive line if that helps the defensive line that helps the linebackers that helps the dbs it's a it, it's a domino effect it's like a catch 22 if if you get all these things humming um, and you have a repeatable formula for sacking the quarterback, you are going to stop opponents from scoring. You're going to win more games. For example, if we had played a little bit better on defense in that Wake Forest game, do we win that game? Probably, but also Probably. we got to remember that the offensive line was yeah. decimated and Robert Scott also showcase yeah. how important that, but we're not going to go too deep into that right, right now. But you're right; it's I think overall what we'll see for this next season is that the defense has the linebackers on are now on the same page. Defensive line majority of the time is on the same page. Now, if we get the defensive backs to also be on the same page all at the same time, we will look good as a unit, and that's primarily how for college football is how you succeed consistently. That is exactly right, Drake. And we have succeeded consistently, I think, I hope, in giving everybody a good show to listen to today. 
Thank you for being here on Locked on Seminoles, Drake. I think you have a spiel to give everybody that I usually do, but I love when you do it. Oh, I hate when I do this, folks. Please, they, as always, thank you for so much for all the love and support. Don't forget, five-star reviews in our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast from. And for all you guys on the YouTube seeing my and beautiful face and Dave's Dave yes. being here, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, tippy tippy top. And ding the little bell so you know when new content officially drops. We love you. And as Dave always says, please drop your comments below. How do you feel about Marcus Woodson? You know, you know, making potentially a lateral move over to Arkansas. Who do you want to see as a new defensive backs coach? Should it be an internal hire? Should it be one of the names that we actually have mentioned or other or other outlets have mentioned? And also, how do you feel about the most exciting parts of both offensively and defensively of the team this past season? That is exactly right. We we love reading your thoughts, but believe it or not, we read every single one of them and we talk about them on and off air. So please do leave us some comments. Please do come back for tomorrow's episode. Thank you for being here. That was Drake. This was Dave. And this is Locked on Seminole. Take care, everybody. Don't take my taglines anymore, man. Come on, dude. Come up, come up. You need to come up with your own.